Good tidings, ladies and gentlemen of the Lodge, and welcome back. Today we are continuing our Heroes Journey series, where we zoom in on our favorite heroes and analyze their journey every step of the way. Our hero of choice today is none other than Roxas from Kingdom Hearts 2. Now, of course, as we all know, Roxas's journey spans across multiple games, but the particular journey we are talking about today is the one that takes place solely in Kingdom Hearts 2. But before moving forward, as a preface, I must mention that the hero's journey as we know it was put forth by Joseph Campbell in his internationally acclaimed book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. It outlines how many of our favorite heroes, despite their differences, all experience the same patterns and structure on their adventures. The model on the screen is the one I will be using as it outlines both the hero's inner and outer journeys. To help you follow the outer journey will be listed in gold while the inner journey will be listed in purple along the bottom. And with that out of the way, let's dive into Roxas' journey in Kingdom Hearts 2. Ordinary World, Unawareness of the Problem Our hero Roxas' journey starts here in the Ordinary World, where he is currently unaware of the problem at hand. The Ordinary World being Data Twilight Town. The problem being Roxas is unaware he is in a data world, a nobody, and currently being held captive and walking a path to his end. To put it simply, Roxas is unaware of the truth. However, with all of that said, Roxas seems relatively happy here in the ordinary world, enjoying a summer vacation among his friends. But this marks the beginning of his journey towards the truth. Call to Adventure Increased Awareness our second step of the journey is the call to adventure, which brings about increased awareness to our hero. This step of the journey is on full display here, where Roxas is in pursuit of the photo thief, and this pursuit leads him towards the old mansion, which is a place that is hiding a lot of the truth that Roxas will eventually want to uncover. The biggest spark that increases Roxas' awareness would be the summoning of the Keyblade the first of many anomalies that will occur for our young hero. Moving us into our next step. Refusal of the call, fear and resistance to change. Many times, no matter how brave our heroes can be, they often refuse the call to adventure the first time it comes around. Here on day two, Roxas doesn't seem to think much of the Keyblade and Old Mansion anomaly from yesterday, and appears to want to just go on living life as it is. Instead of this sparking his curiosity, it enables his ignorance, which you will see in time, the more aware Roxas becomes, the more curious he will become as well. Carrying on to our next step, meeting the mentor, overcoming fear. Our fourth step in the journey is where our hero begins overcoming their fear, which is often catalyzed by meeting a mentor figure. For our man Roxas here, his mentor is in fact Naminé. Naminé's appearance to Roxas gives him the courage and curiosity to pursue the truth and fight the nobody's head on. She even instructs him to use the Keyblade. In a world where many are trying to hide the truth from Roxas, Naminé seems to be the only one with an interest in telling him the truth. Which will carry us to our next step, crossing the threshold, committing to change. This next step on the journey is going to take us to the Station of Awakening, which I thought was a fantastic touch. Typically, the Station of Awakening is revealed to us before the journey even takes off, sort of like a prologue in a sense. But to use it to signal Roxas' crossing a threshold is genius. With Roxas having more information at his disposal, he commits to fighting back and looking further into the mysteries surrounding his current predicament. All catalyzed by this sort of station of awakening scene. This will carry us to tests, allies, and enemies, experimenting with new conditions. Typically in a JRPG, this section of the journey covers a lot of ground. But for Roxas's particular journey, it seems to not only move quickly, but is quite the standout segment. Anyway, this section of the journey can be primarily covered by Day 4's event, The Struggle. So let's break this down by level. As far as tests go, that can easily be identified as the Struggle competition, as this stands as a test of Roxas's will and determination. As far as allies go, of course we have Hainer, Pence, and Olette, but we also come to find that Cypher and the gang actually end up rooting for Roxas as well. 
To take it another step further as far as allies go, this is also the day when Roxas makes contact with Kairi. But now moving on to the enemies, this section is a little bit nuanced. On the obvious front, we have Setzer and the imposter Vivi, but this also includes Axel and Diz. Even though Axel and Diz aren't villains per se, they do behave rather antagonistically towards Roxas here. Anyway, this is the point in the story where the hero begins to experiment with new conditions. Given his participation in the struggle, as well as his pursuit of Imposter Vivi, we see Day 4 as a perfect example of this step in the journey. Moving us on to Approach of Inmost Cave, preparing for major change. This step in the journey is a step which prepares our hero for major change. It's at this moment Roxas collides with Naminé in a sort of projection of himself into the old mansion. This is where Naminé starts to walk him through his own memories, as well as fills him in on who Sora and the people from his dreams are. It's here that Roxas learns that there's a connection between himself and Sora, and that for Sora to be whole again, he will require Roxas. This takes us to Ordeal, Death and Rebirth, Attempt Big Change. This step in the journey is beautifully symbolized by Roxas fading away from Twilight Town. He can't contact his friends, he disappeared from the picture, Axel realizing he's long gone, and as far as Roxas' attempt at big change, that can be observed in his boost in curiosity, like we discussed earlier. Roxas is attempting to get a grasp on his identity and past, and finally get a hold on what's going on. Bringing us to reward slash consequences of attempt at change. This is the stage in the journey where the hero's attempts at change bring them reward or consequences, depending on how you frame it. For Roxas, his newfound curiosity brings him to a conversation with Naminé where she gives him further insight as to who he is and what a nobody is. Additionally, his curiosity has him stumble upon the computer slash laboratory that brings a portion of his memories back. His memories of the organization, his memories of his battle with Riku, and even an insight to Riku and Diz putting him into the fake Twilight Town. And upon receiving these consequences, Roxas slashes out. Understandably so. If the fates weren't so cruel, that would have been the end of Roxas' suffering. But the truth comes with a price. And now Roxas must fight the man who he now only remembers used to be his friend, Axel. And as if that wasn't enough, it all comes to a head here in this moment, where Diz makes Roxas' whole situation as clear as day. There's a moment here where Roxas gets pushed to his limit and lashes out yet again. Gotta love the cinematic effect of his breathing here to really show you how much he's really tripping out. Upon seeing Sora with his own eyes, he accepts his fate as given, a consequence he was trying his best to avoid. Bringing us to the road back slash new challenge and rededication. This is the step in the journey where the hero finds a new goal and forges a path towards said goal. Alas, Roxas begins his road back. His challenge is no longer to figure out the truth of his particular situation, seeing as he knows it now. Now he has another truth to pursue. Why Sora and not him? Roxas accepts his fate and begins his road back into Sora's heart. However, his journey does not end here. Bringing us into final attempts, last minute danger slash resurrection. This stage of the journey serves as our emotional climax as Roxas makes his final attempts to work out whether or not his heart belongs to him or if it belongs within Sora. This stage in the journey is pretty self-explanatory, as it is fleshed out by this epic battle between Sora and Roxas, where upon the conclusion of said battle, Roxas finds the answers he was looking for all along. Sora will find the answer we're looking for. I know he will, because he's me. You make a good other. Bringing us to the last step of the journey, return with the elixir, mastery of problem. After his defeat at the hands of Sora within the domains of Sora's heart, suddenly the truth becomes evident in more ways than one. Roxas sees he was a nobody at the hands of the organization. He remembers his friendship with Axel. He knows Data Twilight Town was fake, that there is in fact a chance that nobodies do have hearts, but that ultimately it's time for him to return to Sora and leave the rest in his hands. Roxas learns his fate and accepts it, 
And even though his fate may be unfair and cruel, he maintains an optimism that Sora can find a way. You all know the rest. Upon reuniting with Sora, Roxas is reunited with Namine, and that reunion was a sight to behold. <sighs> Roxas, we will meet again, and then we can talk about everything. I may not know it's you, and you may not know it's me, but we will meet again, someday soon. I promise! The story of Roxas in Kingdom Hearts 2 is one where accepting a harsh truth requires the deconstruction of a pleasant lie. Roxas may have been a nobody, but it was clear he had a heart, especially as we saw him continue to live and grow. Roxas making the selfless decision here and accepting his fate granted him many rewards in the long run, including a reunion with his beloved friends. Perhaps it's Roxas who not only teaches us to be selfless, but that perhaps a loss in the short term or present moment can lead to a win in the long run. Roxas being strong enough to accept the truth of his situation allowed him to escape the clutches of the organization and for his waking life to not require Sora's to sleep. Roxas is a fan favorite for a reason, and I believe at the core of the audience's love for him is the recognition of the archetypes we discussed here today. But now you tell me, why do you love Roxas as a character? Where do you see this character going in the future? And lastly, what are your favorite moments of his journey? But with all of that said, ladies and gentlemen, sickos and normies, it's my pleasure to bring this content to you. So be sure to subscribe, drop a like, and if you're up for it, share with me your thoughts in the comment section. But until then, you all be good out there, be good to each other, and I will see all of you beautiful sickos and normies next time.